So we is what we're going to be talking about in this video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is very quickly becoming a rising star in the cryptocurrency space. And if you're interested or potentially wanting to know more about the SUI blockchain, this is absolutely the video for you. Now, the last time we covered SUI was a little over a month ago, and it's come a long way since then. In fact, the last time that we looked at the SUI blockchain, it was 30th in terms of market cap. So you can see this over here. We were highlighting SUI and we were expecting great things to come from it. We were highlighting the fact that it was 100% up and we were expecting it to do uh, another 100% or so. Um, and you can see it was 30th in terms of market cap. Today, it is currently 19th. And its market cap has doubled and we're expecting the kind of momentum that we're currently seeing behind SUI to continue. I'm going to explain perhaps why that might be in this video. We'll also be sharing roughly where we think SUI's price can get to. Now, technically, we don't necessarily have any kind of technical patterns. However, it is about to break out to new all-time highs and is a 10x something that is achievable well if we look at 2021's bull market we had the likes of binance coin getting to 100 billion dollars in market cap solana getting to 75 billion and of course cardano getting to 67 billion we're going to be linking cardano into the equation in just a second because charles hoskinson the founder of cardano who you'll know i'm a big fan of recently came out and mentioned sui and kind of gave it some praise which is quite rare from him um in my experiences as somebody that's been following him really since 2015 uh, and Cardano was one of those altcoins that literally did nearly 100x for us in the last bull market. Is SUI going to do 100x and get to a $500 billion market cap? Well, maybe one day in the future. But in regards to this bull market, could it do something like a 10x? I think that's more than plausible based on market cap um, alone. And we've certainly seen it progress since the last time we looked at it. And what was SUI's price here when we last looked at it? It was $1.30. And what we were essentially highlighting was the recent rally and the kind of... Uh, trend that you had just broken out of uh, in regards to SUI and the sort of trajectory that you were now likely on. And, and since then, it's come a hell of a long way. You know, if we drop down to the daily time frame, this was the downtrend that we were highlighting and you had broken out and you were just here sort of in the $1 range. And since then, you've shot all the way up to 200 and $12. So why is this the case? What's SUI all about? These are some of the questions we're going to be hopefully be asking and answering in this video. We'll be talking about SUI in more detail, talking about, you know, what SUI is, why it's unique, where it came from, you know, what was the kind of vision behind it. It's very interesting that the vast majority of people that work on SUI come from really impressive backgrounds, whether that be Google, Microsoft, whatever it may be, We'll hear about that during the course of this video. And actually, the sort of initial founding of SUI has very interesting origins in regards to the people that went on to found SUI being the very people that were tasked with Facebook's Libra, then became Diem or Dias or, or something along those lines, and now has been reborn in regards to SUI. So going to be some really interesting connections there. But I want to start the video off in regards to Charles Hoskinson. He tweeted, and we're going to play a clip of him explaining this in a little bit more detail just the other day, reading about SUI. It's good to see George's work come to life. They deserve great success in the space. Now, as somebody that's watched Charles Hoskinson for a long, long time, for him to be praising, and I think Charles doesn't get as much credit as he deserves, early Ethereum guy, depending on who you believe in regards to how that ended. Um, you know, there's some sort of interesting things in regards to that. You know, he's played a fundamental role in regards to, or he's played a role at least in regards to the, 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 the crypto crypto space and where it currently is he's typically in my experience not been too um forthcoming with praising other projects the fact that he's praising sui as a very technical techn technical guy i think is a massive green light what i want to do now is dive over to a clip of him sort of extending on this before we dive in to sui a little bit deeper let's get into this clip because you know from time to time i comment on technology and projects in the ecosystem as a whole and people are so radicalized and polar that they anticipate the founder of cardano to always just say negative things about the things that people do and if i say anything positive there's this immediate impression that i'm abandoning cardano or somehow uh, being disloyal to the project of course, that tribalism is intrinsically self-destructive. And second, it prevents us from learning and growing together as an ecosystem. So recently, I made some comments about SWE. 
you know, I've been looking at the project um, with an objective eye. And the reason why is that some of the technology comes from George Denezis. Uh, I've known George for almost a decade, and we were one of the first teams to implement RS Coin, a protocol that he wrote with Sarah Mikulchan uh, years ago that we used as a precursor to some things with Cardano uh, before the mainnet launched. Uh, so we've always tried to find a way to collaborate with George, but he's always been busy in U UCL, and, and we have our team up at uh, University of Edinburgh. We're all in the same academic circles there, and everybody reads and cites each other's papers. So he wrote a paper called Narwhal and Tusk, uh, which is one of the fastest BFT protocols ever conceived. Incredibly high throughput, six-figure TPS, low latency. It has trade-offs, as does Red Belly and others, uh, but George is a real researcher. And if you look at the design of SWE, there is real research and there's a real team uh, that's behind it. I'm not commenting on the distribution, the tokenomics, how they've launched, all those things. I haven't looked at those things, and nor do I care about them. I don't hold any SWE, and I'm not involved with the project in any way. So I dispassionately look at these things to say, is there any interesting innovation uh, that has occurred? Because it's important for us as an ecosystem to see what we can collaborate on work with. Very interesting. And that's kind of what this video is on the back end of. When you hear somebody like Charles Hoskinson, who's dedicated his life to this industry, praising another cryptocurrency project outside of his own, it's a huge green tick or a huge green light, in my opinion. Uh, what I want to do now, because many of you guys are kind of, Subi's kind of the new kid on the block, isn't it? Many of you are kind of confused in regards to what Sui is before we get into the sort of price stuff. Um, let's actually start with a clip. I believe it was from a Grayscale interview where an individual who's very much in charge or, or, or at the helm of Sui's development goes on to explain how Sui came to be. Let's dive into this clip. We've got a couple of clips to play for you and then we're going to get into some price stuff and hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of what Sui is and the kind of uh, opportunity that it may present. So let's dive into that clip. Uh, can you provide some background on yourself and how SWE came to be created? Um, for instance, what was the problem that you were trying to solve? Certainly. Thank, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure and honor to, to be able to um, share this sort of story around SWE. My name is Adnia Bjorden. I'm one of the co-founders, um, one of the five co-founders okay. of Mist and Labs. We were the original contributors to the project called Libra, formerly at Facebook. We called it, we ended up renaming it to DM. And the goal was to really build a layer that enabled sending money as easy as sending um, a message on WhatsApp or email. We wanted to simplify that experience because we realized bringing the barrier of adoption down and making and just removing the barrier for sending money was going to enable a lot of financial op opportunities for the world that wasn't previously possible. Of course, as everybody knows, that project did not see the light of day. Unfortunately, it, didn't, it never got to launch. But for, to, our, um, to our benefit, we're able to actually realize that dream outside of the realms of Facebook. So myself and four of the co-founders um, who were responsible for a lot of the R&D, well, all the R&D that led to the launch of Libra, left, including the creator of the Move Programming Language, M. Sam Blackshare, to build Mist and Labs. And the project we embarked on is to go beyond what we tried to do at Libra and build a global coordination layer. Our view was if you enable the if you enable the developers to coordinate the actions or the intent of users in an atomic way at scale, you're going to build new forms of business businesses that open up trillions of dollars of value for consumers and overall for businesses as a whole. We think entire new um, consumer segments or even developer segments can be built off the back of just enabling the coordination of user intent at scale. Extremely interesting. I think again, it's very um, intriguing that Sui really came off the back end of Libra, which of course never launched. That was going to be Facebook Meta, one of the largest companies in the world. Blockchain, then they went on to do Sui. Um, so we've had Charles Hoskinson really praise it, praise it for some of the work that was done on the back end of Sui uh, in regards to some of the developers and principles that were put forward and, and some of the tech that they use. There's a very impressive team. We're going to hear about more of that in just a second. Let's actually get an overview now of what Sui is from that individual and then why it's unique. And then we'll wrap things up on a little bit of price action. You know, is Sui, this is the question you've got to be asking yourself, the play for this bull run? Well, I think it's going to do very well. I think it's done very well. I think it's going to continue to climb and might find itself was in the top 10. It might be a Solana style mover within this bull market that catches many people off guard. Certainly there's a lot of reasons to be impressed by it. Let's dive into clip number two. So I'd, I'd explain it. The internet is great for sending um, data across, right? Like if I want to send you a file, the internet is built for that. It's done a very good job of making that possible. Now, for me to send value to you, the internet was not built to atomically, uh, atomically allow you and I to agree on a set, uh, set of events or even my intent to be represented in an atomic way. So what we're building, what SWE actually is, is a global coordination layer for user intent. It enables developers to conjure up or collaborate a lot of things that users want to do 
in a way that is very, very easy. For example, if I want to buy an airline ticket at the same time, pay for my hotel room, while also paying for my hotel room, I want to book the ex excursions I want to do at the same time. To do that on the internet is very, very fragmented. So I need, I need to go to five different websites, do a, a bunch of searches, find who has inventory, make that booking, and maybe I might book the hotel room and lose the flight. But if you had a coordination layer that allows you to do that at scale, I can do all those actions from one click of a button. So SWE is redefining that. It's beyond just the blockchain. Um, SWE is effectively enable, enabling developers to coordinate user intent in an atomic way at a scale that's never been possible. I'm happy to go into the details on the technicals. And I think some of the innovations we've come up with around the object-centric approach, basically the ability to have everything represented as an object, makes it very, very easy for developers to pick up. So if I had to summarize it, right, like internet is great for sending data, not so good for sending value. SWE is great for sending data and value at the same time, but it allows you to do that in a very, very easy way, in a programmatic way. Intriguing, no? Um, and this is the thing with distributed ledgers. We're very much on board with the new kind of economy that is going to spawn on the back end of all of this. It's very much taking the internet to the next level and evolving that. And when he says SUI is more than a blockchain, you know, we know blockchain is the technology, but there's something far more here than what we've seen historically be the case with cryptocurrencies in regards to sort of financial applications, DeFi, things like that being undertaken. Let's now uh, take a look at a clip of him talking about why actually SUI is separate from the rest. What it, What is special about SUI versus all these other layer ones? Sure thing. So um, what makes SUI special is actually a number of things. I want to go into move very quickly and I'll explain a bit further. While we're at Facebook, um, a, a team led by Sam did some research in multitude of languages are available. And we just found that there's no way we could have stood in front of a regulator with Solidity or any other programming language without being able to give a guarantee on the correctness of the um, transaction that happened. So it's one thing to you know do a transaction and it fails, but it's another thing to do a transaction and then you end up losing money. So money is valuable because you trust you can retrieve it for value at the end of the day or for face value of what it represents. And if you have incorrect programming that could cause um, um, losses, which we see all the time in EVM, there's always a hack. We think there would eventually be a billion dollar hack on EVM. It's impossible to keep secure. Um, you cannot build a sustainable um, ecosystem, a financial ecosystem around that. So we built Move specifically to be safe. Now, when we left Facebook, what we did is we took Move and then we improved upon it to make the developer experience a lot more natural. Um, the world of Web3 forces developers to think around accounts. They talk about account abstraction. Everything is account-based. Well, unfortunately, that's not how the world really works. Everything in the world you think of, this pair of glasses is an object. This phone is an object. Everything is an object. So developers think of objects, and programming languages have taken on an object-oriented construct for, for decades, and we're going backwards. So with SWE, very, very different model, where everything is built as an object. And because everything is an object, myself transferring $5 to you versus someone buying an airline ticket are two distinct events happening at the same time. So we don't have um, uh, the, we don't have an issue of trying to really line everything up and do a transaction in, in, um, uh, in a sequential way. We can parallelize the whole thing. So SWE allows you to parallelize uh, you know, millions of user intent at the same time and do that without having any kind of congestion. That is innovation. It's, it's not just the move from language. It goes all the way from the object model move all the way down to the storage layer. That's why you, um, SWE is the only chain that doesn't have a max throughput. The more machines you throw at SWE, the faster it gets. So you don't think of a single machine, you think of boxes that go in parallel. So this is how we build search at Google. Our company is full of Googlers, Facebookers, people who've actually built infrastructure for billions. Um, it's how you build search at Google, it's how you build infra at Facebook. You build it to be scalable from day one. And it's truly unique. No other blockchain has that kind of property. We are certainly intrigued. You know, SUI is ultimately introducing new paradigms to the world. And when you look at where the cryptocurrency space is, it's still in its infancy. And I could see the likes of SUI really growing and playing a sort of integral role in regards to what Web3 is trying to achieve. Um, it has a lot of accolades in regards to doing so. Let's do something a little bit fun now because we've covered SUI and hopefully answered quite a few questions that many of you may have um, and shown you some interesting points. Let's, let's do something fun now and take a look at SUI from a price point of view. So obviously in our last video, not only did we look at the price, we spoke about how Franklin Templeton were really sort of favoriting SUI. A lot of favoritism over there. I would like to see some sort of a pullback here into some sort of continuation pattern. That would be something I'd like to see. It's very common when you take a high, you might just shoot through this and come back to retest it as support, but you'll often sort of pull back in and around it. And that's going to allow us to essentially look for some sort of continuation pattern, which we don't have as of yet. Um, but it may be on the cards sometime soon. And certainly that could give us a target 
in and around just to be very rough here remember we've got to see pattern set up the sort of ten dollar range so that's over a 5x from where it currently is today its market cap currently sits at 5.7 trillion dollars up 20 percent today i don't believe you know the last time we looked at this project it was literally 30th in terms of market cap today it's 19th i don't think it's going to be long before it shoots into the top 10 and ultimately how high can it go well, the only thing we can really look at because we don't have any kind of a technical roadmap as of yet is potentially market cap and what's in the realms of possibility in regards to how much of a market cap, if we are, and we do believe we are going into a full-blown bull market, what can it achieve? Can it achieve 70 trillion billion in terms of market cap? I think that's more than achievable. And that obviously would put SUI at a, um, you know, nearly 14x from its current price, giving it a sort of 20 plus dollar um, uh price prediction which i think potentially may be on the card so in regards to a price prediction we don't have a definitive one we're going to have to wait to see what happens we could speculate based on market cap that it might be a 20 something x this bull market it might do solana like returns currently at 5 billion we could see it getting to sort of 75 um plus potentially depending on how this bull market goes um and take from that what you will of course nothing we do or say here is financial advice we just thought this would be a really interesting video to kind of embed Sui into some of your minds out there. Certainly a very impressive cryptocurrency project praised by the likes of Charles Hoskinson, which doesn't happen very often. Also uh, on its own accolades, very, very impressive, whether you look at the team, whether you look at the tech, so on and so forth. And this ability to infinitely scale based on the sort of hardware that accompanies it, I think is uh, nothing short of impressive and needed in regards to a blockchain that might see the kind of use cases that Sui is looking to enable. That's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to love and leave you on that note. Have a magical Monday and I'll see you all in the next one.